Jackie Clark Chisholm, welcome to Upfront. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you so much for having me on today, Ray. I appreciate you. No, the pleasure is all mine. When David said, listen, I got Jackie Clark wanting to talk to you this week. I was so excited. We are so happy about this film that's coming out this weekend. Yes. Perfect weekend. Resurrection Sunday weekend. And uh, such a timely message. But before we get into that, you just released a new single, Feel Good with Mary J. Blige. And I'm telling you, I was in here rocking and moving side to side to that song. How did that opportunity come to you? You know, it was really amazing. You know, I was, I did a webinar today and I was telling people about the word fear versus faith. And a lot of times we don't really understand how God is gonna do something. I just had in my heart that I wanted to ask her. And so, you know, the only thing that was holding me back was, well, she might say, no, is you crazy? And so I pushed it aside and I said, Lord, I'm just gonna call her and ask her. I was so humble. I cried. I called her on the phone. I asked her. She said, send it to me. And when I sent, I sent it to her, probably about 20 minutes later, she called me back. She said, I'll do it. She went in the studio that day and did it. Wow. Wow. And so, you know, and I know that it's business because when I was talking to her, I said, Mary, if you don't want to do it, I understand. I said, I, but I said, never be such failure but a try. I said, and I was afraid to call you, but I said, because I love you, I wanted to call you and ask you. And I did. And she said, yes, it wow. was over. Yeah, was, yeah. I was just overwhelmed with, with uh, gratitude from her. So appreciate and love her so much. So let's get into this film. When we first heard that, that Lifetime was doing this, you know, we got a little a little nervous because we've seen some of their previous films that were not so great. But I got to tell you, I got a chance <laughs> to see the film and it is amazing. I mean, they really, really, I was, I interviewed Kiara Shear a few weeks ago and I told her, I said, you guys have redeemed Lifetime <laughs> from bad movies. Here, Lifetime, Matt. Here, tell them. Here, tell them. <laughs> yeah. Such an amazing film. How did that opportunity come to you, ladies? You know, it didn't, the way it came to us, well, let me say this first. We were approached by another company years ago, and the first thing they asked us was, uh, what kind of drama do you have in your family? We don't have drama like that. It's what you've seen in that movie that's probably the most drama that we've ever had. So when they approached me and we said, we don't have drama, they didn't call us back. But Holly Carter um, kept, it was in her heart that she really wanted to see our story because Holly comes from the church like we, from Church of God in Christ, where we are, are um, from. So she kept pushing to do it. Things kept falling out of place. She kept being forging forward, trying to get it done, and ended up getting it done with my with our pastor Bishop she Bishop Shears, and so that's how that actually came apart. We didn't even get a chance to um, meet the people who's going to play our part, but when I tell you they picked the right people, <laughs> I was going to ask you. Lady, hmm. Yeah, the young lady, I believe her name is Angela uh, Burchett, plays you. Yes, you, she plays me. Did not get an opportunity to to talk with her before. Filming. Oh no, we did. We had opportunity to see. We didn't select the people. Like they didn't have a, you know, a showing where you come and audition. They didn't hit, do none of that. Okay. We just was went. We met with the person that that was going to play our part. So when I met her, I loved her, and she she acts just like we silly as we can be. And I think the reason why I'm so silly is because when I was coming up, um, I had to always be responsible. My mother helped me because I'm the oldest sister. So I was always responsible. So my time of playing and having a good time and being silly with them, I didn't have that time because I was too busy being responsible. So I, as an adult, I, have, I mean, I just enjoy life. I enjoy being with my sisters. Um, we are very close. And, and the joy of putting the movie together and then meeting the people. She sat with me for two days, uh, about eight or 10 hours each day, but we laughed the entire time. But she got a chance to see me, get my demeanor. She asked all the questions that she could ask. And then we, we wrote the script. Okay. So what you see is really what we actually wrote. So we're really proud of the way they depicted it. Now, to be honest between you and I, I've never seen the whole movie. Okay. I didn't watch it because, Ray, I wanted to feel what the audience is gonna feel when they see it on Saturday. 
So my husband watched it because my husband was with the Clark Susans from the inception. And so I didn't want to watch it because I wanted to feel the same feeling that a person who's outside would feel. Now, all my sisters have seen it. I just didn't see it. You're the, you're the last one. <laughs> yes. Let's talk about exactly. Anjanu Ellis, who plays your mom, Dr. Oh, Mac Moth-Clark. I mean, I, I, and I know you haven't seen it, but she does an amazing job. Listen, that when we went to do our last, we only did one scene in the film, and that's the last scene, right? Did you see that? I, I did, yes. Yeah, the, how, we, how we transitioned into the, okay. So we got to see her like the, the, the scenes before that, or it was some earlier scene. No, it was a scene, the scene that I saw when we saw um, in Toronto, we saw the scene of my mother talking to Twinkie about her catalog. Okay, which was a very powerful scene. Oh my God. And when we saw her do that scene, we all cried. We just sat in our chairs and cried. Wow. The woman acted just like my mother. Did you know my mother? I, I, I had heard about her. I had seen pictures of her from back in the day and I had heard how, how powerful she was and how very yeah. strict she was and very, um, very commanding when it came to directing the choir and and all of those things. And so I, knowing yep. that and seeing her do it, I was just like, oh my gosh, she deserves an Emmy Award for that. Yeah, she, she that girl played my mother. <laughs> I mean, and let me tell you, <laughs> so I went to the NAACP Award, right? Okay. And so this lady walked up to me and she was speaking to me and everything. And I was saying, hi, how you doing, how you doing? And when we got to our seat, the runner said, Jackie, did you know who that was? I said, no, I ain't never seen that lady before. It was her. <laughs> I said, Angelou, I did not know who you were because you didn't have those glasses on. You was, you was dressed like my mama, so I never saw her undressed. It was right. so funny. She laughed so hard wow. at me. I didn't know who she was right? because she was dressed up. She so, had embodied but, your mother so. Yeah. Yes. She, yeah. Had be she became our mother. And when we saw her, you know, when we, when we actually had a chance to meet her, she wasn't dressed in street clothes. She was dressed in my... In the clothes looking like my mom, so we just bust out and start crying. Yeah. But the lady played so my mother so my mother would have been so proud of this woman reenacting her because she did my mother like no other person. Wow. Nobody knew what that lady did. She was absolutely phenomenal. If you can, can you share a a a, a memory? Because uh, there's there's one scene, and I don't want to give it away, but there's a there's a very funny scene between you. Uh, uh, in, and your mom in the film, but can you remember something else that uh, j that just stands out as, as a memory of, of your mom? I think um, the scene, the scene, the scene about my mom getting on Twiggy about that catalog. Okay. That scene right there of my mother, and my mother said to her, I can remember the incident. My mother was saying, she, I guess she had gotten a phone call about it. And when she got the phone call, she didn't get Twinkie by herself because we was all we was always home. Like we didn't we didn't venture out doing things, you know, without somebody going with somebody. That's right. that was how we was raised. So when when my mother got the phone call and and uh the man told my mother that Twinkie had signed it, my mother said, Twi I, I know you didn't go and sign no contract. It didn't talk to me. And she was you know, my mother was good at that. She would pound on it, take her fist and pound on the table. And she said, I tell you didn't do that. I tell me you didn't do that. That scene, when she when she played that scene, it was so, it was almost like I was reliving the scene again. And so I think that probably would be the most memorable scene about my mom in the movie. And since I haven't seen the movie, I can't tell you of any other scenes that, yeah. other than the scene, my, the scene that I talked about um, in the script about my mom being abused. I think that that to me, and my sisters, listen, my sisters did not want me to tell that. They want, they want no, 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 we don't want you to say. And I, this is what I said to them. You see, I, I have a philosophy that if I'm true for you, with you, I'm gonna help you. If I lie to you, you'll take my lie and try to relive it and you may hurt somebody else. But if I'm truthful with you, you're gonna remember that truth. 
So I had to tell my sister, this is my truth. It didn't happen to you. It happened to me. So let me tell my truth. And I don't know how they depicted it yet, but that was a part in the script that I wrote that I had them to write. Um, that was a true scene for me because I was involved in the scene. So it was not like I was telling you something that I saw or something that I heard, but I was actually in that scene because I, I lived through it. So I think that probably was the, the most uh, exhilarating part for me was being able to tell that, but they didn't want me to tell it. But then after I, you know, after I told them, you know, you have to let me tell the truth. Because when I tell you the truth, and I want people to realize that we didn't have, our life is no different from your life or your family. We got the same issues that you got in your family. We got some crazy people in our family. We got some crazy people in our family. Oh, yeah. We got some. We got yeah. a few. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So when you think about it, we have not done, our life ain't nothing different from nobody else. The only difference between us and a lot of other people is God has blessed us and anointed us to sing and to share the gospel with the world. And that, to me, is the most important thing about our life. So if I can help you or inspire you or empower you or give you inspiration or encourage you in some way through our movie and through our songs, listen, then I've done all that God requires of me. I had one other question. You have been able to balance your career of being a singer as well as being a nurse for uh, decades now. What was, was there ever a struggle or did you just submit to both? Well, I think my mother was very congenial to me. She was very proud because I, my brother and I were the first ones to graduate from college. And I think she, she, um, she did it so that I could finish school. I wanted to be a doctor. I really didn't want to be a nurse. I wanted to be a doctor. Uh, and she politely told me, if you, you want to do anything in medical field, you better go to nursing school because we can't afford to send you to, to, to medical school. Right. And so I just took that and, you know, and relished myself with that. But she, she created the opportunities for me to go to school so that we only traveled on weekends until I graduated. She did that for me. Um, and um, I balanced that because I still work today. Okay. Um, I only work three days, but I'm a wound specialist. So I do, I, um, I really enjoy uh, taking care of sick people. I really enjoy that. And so that is a part of me um, not only sharing healing in, within people's physical being, but also healing within the church and healing within people. It's important that we encourage, enlighten, and help healing people and talking to people and encouraging them. That is so important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Ms. Jackie Clark Chisholm, thank you so much for being a guest today on Upfront. Again, we're super thank excited you. about the Lifetime film, The Clark Sisters, The First Ladies of Gospel. Also your new album, The Return, as well as your new single, Feel Good. And uh, nothing but just, um, I don't want to say luck because I know we don't believe in luck, but many, many blessings yeah. for the rest thank of you. Uh, 2020 and uh, 2021. And thank you again so much for being our guest. Thank you. Love you. Thank you so much. All right. Bye -bye.